So this is a great sermon by Paul Washer, and the link is in the description. He hits on so many different points in this one sermon that I was amening all over the place. I've watched it twice, and I committed to go watch it. Now, the excerpt, from, the excerpt from the sermon that I'm going to play after I talk deals with people that get mad when Christians rebuke other professing Christians for heresy and falsehood. They say things like, stop fighting each other. We're all Christians, and all you guys want to do is fight, going back and forth with each other. You're wasting time. We just need to focus on being Christians. They say things like that. And I got a few subscribers on my channel, and you know who you are, and you guys do this. Um, and the truth is, you say this because you secretly, and this is the truth, you say this because you secretly agree with the heretic, but don't want to admit it. Okay, that's why you that's why you come at it from that angle, because you secretly agree with the false teacher, but you don't want to admit it. You don't want to address it. So it's not fighting. It's standing for truth and applying pressure to heretical teachings that hold weight because of who is saying it. So doctrine matters. And now I want to go ahead and let Paul Washer break it down a little further. We need proclaimers of God's word. We need this priest. We need this Ezra. This is what we need now. And I'm going to go on a bit. But this is a big subject, but I'm going to try to move fast. The command to make disciples. This is from a work I'm working on. The command to make disciples through teaching proves that Christianity is a truth religion and the Great Commission is a doctrinal endeavor. However, one glance at world missions today will demonstrate that doctrine is not a high priority. And for this reason, our missionary activity has become something of a contradiction, even an absurdity. Let me give you a few of the most glaring examples. And I've written these down. First, it has become popular opinion that Christians should lay aside their doctrine and unite around their common faith in Christ. Sounds good. However, the harsh reality is that there are many versions of Christ being proclaimed on the earth today by those who claim to be his followers. How can we distinguish the true Christ from the multitude of false Christ except through a careful study of the scriptures and a faithful application of its doctrine? Are we to preach a Christ to the nations who is so general or vague that we fill the world and the church with countless contradictory opinions regarding his person and work? Unity cannot logically be founded upon our common confession of an undefined Christ and our contrary and contradictory opinions of him. Second, it is often stated that Christians should lay aside their theology and unite around the common cause of the Great Commission. However, the Great Commission is primarily a theological endeavor. To lay aside theology in order to advance a theological endeavor is logical suicide and self-destructive. It is absurd to think that the Great Commission can be the thread that binds together individuals who differ in major tenets of doctrine. Unity must be based upon a common view of who Christ is and what he taught. Third, it has become a common maxim that Christians should concern themselves with the major doctrines of the faith and not sweat the small stuff. The famous quotation attributed to Augustine reflects this wisdom. In essentials, unity. In doubtful matters, liberty. In all things, charity. The statement is well-founded and well-worded. However, there are some underlying and inherent dangers in such an opinion. One of the most serious has to do with the current trend in Christianity, which increasingly, listen to me, increasingly depreciates the importance of absolutes. As this trend continues, Christians relegate more and more doctrine to the small stuff category. Doctrines that were previously held to be absolute essentials are no longer considered worthy of arguing about. If someone says something twisted and vulgar about your wife and you tell me it's not worth arguing about, what kind of man does that make you? 